afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Endocrine Grand Rounds. Uh, it is uh, my pleasure and honor to introduce uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Lou Kai. Um, Dr. Kai has, uh, in his uh, very distinguished career, um, has been uh, incredibly productive. He uh, joined the University of Louisville um, as a research associate, uh, I believe, in 1999. So uh, he is now he is now uh, pushing uh, well beyond his 20 years here at the university, which is fantastic. Um, yeah. Over uh, the subsequent years, he rose through the ranks, and uh, 2013 was a big year. Uh, he um, uh, was uh, appointed as professor, or he joined the ranks of professor uh, in 2013. At the same time, uh, he also accepted the Children's Hospital Foundation Chair for Pediatric Research, and he became director of what is now known as the Pediatric Research Institute. So it was a big year. Um, at the same time, he also uh, uh, formally began working um, with me and our Wendy Novak Diabetes Center, uh, and we began a, uh, a collaborative relationship that has been uh, really fruitful, um, and, and it's been really fantastic working with him. Uh, over the course of his career, uh, he has uh, uh, done an array of grant-funded research. He has trained dozens of young scientists who have gone on to uh, incredible careers, both here in the United States and abroad. Um, he has published, uh, I, I think you're getting close to 400 publications, possibly, be, possibly beyond no. that at this point. No, no. Uh, 730. But, yes, just, but absolutely fantastic. And uh, the focus of his uh, career, really his, his interests have been uh, cardiovascular complications of diabetes and obesity, uh, antioxidants like metallothionine um, and the preventative effects that they have on oxidative damage, much of the work that he and I have worked on together, uh, as well as trace element homeostasis, um, zinc, copper, iron, and, and so on. Uh, and today he is going to um, uh, talk about diabetic cardiomyopathy and the role of zinc and its binding protein, metallothionine, in insulin signaling. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kai. Uh, it's a pleasure that you're uh, joining us today. Thank you, Cooper, for the nice uh, introduction and uh, a good afternoon for everyone. And uh, thank you very much for your coming and uh, joining and online and us too. And uh, today is a, a great uh, uh, a pleasure for me here and to uh, introduce my uh, uh, some part of work in my lab and the diabetic cardiomyopathy. And I will focus on the zinc and also zinc binding protein and in the insulin signaling. And oh, I saw this. Should be, yeah. And I do not have any uh, conflict interesting to decline and accept the um, uh, PI for the cover the ADA uh, grants, uh, like a support grant. So I plan to uh, using the following uh, sequencing or item to introduce my pre like, uh, today's presentation. And I will very briefly introduce how important of zinc and uh, continue to uh, talk about uh, what is the metal signing and then briefly introduce a uh, diabetic cardiomyopathy and uh, focus on the MT and the metal signing protect uh, the heart from diabetes and from the evidence and mechanism and the potential uh, clinical application. And the last part and something new idea, I try to look for some collaborator and uh, if whoever interesting for that interactions. So how important and uh, the, the zinc and uh, we know zinc is a uh, trace uh, uh, elements, and that is an essential uh, mineral, like uh, potassium, sodium, and iron, and copper is very important in our body. And that is uh, required for uh, many uh, cellular uh, mechanisms, and uh, like a uh, metabolism. And it is required for the uh, catalytic activity of the uh, many enzymes, and is required for DNA and protein synthesis. 
and cell proliferation and wood healing and also it's important to maintain the normal immune functions. And zinc is very important regarding incidence because from structure to have zinc and for the normal structure and the release from the beta cells and from pancreas and also is a have an insulin sensitizing function in the peripheral tissues. So that is something related to today's topic. So zinc is required for the fetal or the embryo growing, normally growing and development, and also is very important for children and adolescent and to normally growing and mature. And uh, so that is uh, some part is uh, interesting. Zinc is uh, very important for the uh, sense of the taste and the smell. And uh, uh, usually our body do not have a very good zinc st uh, storage. So uh, that's why we need uh, like a routine uh, to maintain the normally take intake of the zinc. Otherwise, we do not have the storage for maintaining the homeostasis. So that is the information easily to confound from the NIH, and the link is here, but also I have several uh, like a comprehensive uh, review regarding zinc, and also in the insulin signaling. And with. So where we can find zinc, and actually zinc is a kind of medicine already used, some like a, like a flu, or a, so you can find from pharmacy and culture. And, uh, and so that is a, from the dietary, and we have a lot of uh, food can have the high zinc, like, look like a, like a seafood. Oyster has the best one, and also like nuts and uh, red meat, and that is uh, like beef, and they have a high uh, concentration of zinc. And uh, so like, uh, this is uh, like a dietary uh, intake. So that means uh, it's very good and important, but uh, is that zinc also have a toxin effects? And the answer is uh, yes. And uh, anything is you cannot too much and uh, cannot be too little, but uh, you also cannot too much. But uh, zinc is uh, the, like a different one. Zinc have very wide dose range for the safety, not that toxic and not like other metal were a little bit lower to, like a uh, trouble and a little bit higher big trouble. But I think usually you have to take a lot and can show the toxic effect. Uh, you can see at least here about four or five fold and uh, increased accumulation about the like up tolerant dose that can show some digestion system problem. And the sad effect most time is related to the competition with other uh, mineral like uh, zinc, iron, because you have too much zinc and probably affect the iron and the copper intake. So that is something related to the toxin effect. And also probably have some medicine, have some interaction, but that is a physician or a clinical, they will tell you so that won't worry about that too much. So that is the, the important thing. So that slide just introduces the general features, but how about the cells, how they take the zinc and to, to, like, uh, take out like eliminated zinc. And they have uh, two system, and uh, one system they call the CIP and the number one or other numbers. And that is, uh, we use the blue and the font and the color and the shown. So that is a half the cells intake zinc in, uh, from outside the cells to inside. And they also have uh, other system, like uh, the red and zinc uh, transporter from one to other number. That is have to have the free zinc in the intracellular to remove out from the cells. So that is two systems that control the zinc in and out. And uh, they don't have the uh, free zinc. Most time zinc is bending with the different protein. If you're free, probably eliminate out. And zinc also is a water, waterable, uh, soluble for the like metal, easier to eliminate. But uh, we are lucky in our body, they have one uh, the protein they call the metrocyanin. They can bind in some amount of the zinc. And uh, also when you are some enzyme or protein need zinc, they can donate the zinc to the protein and also can bind in zinc can do through the reduction system to release and uh, binding. So what is a metrocyanin? Metrocyanin is a small peptide about a 61 or 63 amino acid and a small size, but that have one third the amino acid is a cysteine. So that's why it makes the metrocyanin have a very powerful scavenger of free radicals. And normally, and metrocyanin binding zinc, and so that's why 
MT have uh, like two key features and uh, plays an uh, important role for antioxidant, scavenger free radical, and also binding minerals and the metals and plays a mineral in the homeostasis. So that is uh, something regarding about zinc and also metrocyanin. Now I want to talk about the diabetic cardiomyopathy. Like a uh, cover just mentioned, I I'm come to Louisville, that is November uh, 1999, and as a research associate, and I start to building my life as in 2002 and become the faculty. But at that moment, I start to think uh, interesting diabetic cardiomyopathy, and that moment, they do not have that much and uh, work for the uh, diabetic cardiomyopathy. And the while I look for the literature, I learn and uh, what is the diabetic cardiomyopathy. That is uh, like some uh, reported in 1972. And that is uh, some diabetic patient showing the cardiac dysfunction, but without any vascular disease, without hypertension. And so th that and related to the uh, diabetes. So they gave the name diabetic cardiomyopathy. But uh, most time, for the diabetic patient, they have a vascular disease, they have a pen, uh, hypertension. So that means not pure and 100% uh, come from the, uh, the diabetes and also have some combined. But the eyes start to work on that and uh, look for the mechanism. Is that really diabetes directly affect heart or through the vascular from hypertension, something like that? We found that diabetes is uh, caused uh, so, uh, oxidative stress, because in the mitochondria, we now use the uh, uh, oxygen and generate uh, uh, glucose oxidation and uh, generate the ATP, but uh, diabetes uh, damage the uh, mitochondria and release too much uh, superoxide. And the superoxide have the different angle to become different kind of free radical. In our body, we have some SOD, but that only work on the one part from the superoxide to the hydrogen peroxide. If we do not have the enough uh, catalyst or other like uh, uh, antioxidant and the hydrogen peroxide still can become the hydroxy free radical. And the uh, uh, superoxide also quickly interact with the NO from the peroxynitrate, both can quickly damage the protein and lipid and DNA. So that is a, like a, that's why like clinical or the trial antioxidant to prevent the diabetic uh, com complication doesn't work because they have several reasons. And probably that's like sometimes is the kind of the vitamin and the C and the vitamin E. So that is, doesn't work because the vitamin C and the low dose vitamin C shown the antioxidant function, but the high dose the uh, uh, C also, no, uh, vitamin C also causes the RS formation. And uh, so the heart, if you want to protect heart, vascular, you have a lot, a lot of the high dose. So that actually hurt yourself. And uh, vitamin E is a, a lipid soluble uh, like antioxidant. So what does the, the vitamin E does? And when you got the oxidized lipid uh, or protein in the like, uh, have a lipid mem membrane, vitamin E can reduce that. But that actually too late and already causes cell dysfunction damage. And so that is the one reason. And uh, another two important reason is uh, the exogenous antioxidant, probably only one hour or two hours uh, can have uh, increased uh, levels. After two or three hours and they were gone. And the whole 24 hours is uh, like a still lower uh, concentration. And also the distribution not equal because all the like a uh, vitamin E probably go to the liver metabolized and a very small amount go to vascular, go to the heart. So that is, is uh, the, the, the reason not uh, works. So we think we have to find the antioxidant, have the different function, they can work on the all the step, not just like SOD only work on the one step, and also catalysts only also work in the one step. We need, as well as we have an additional, uh, not necessary the free radical, I can uh, scavenge that. And also we need the endogenous, we can upregulate and keep that is showing the high level in the, cell, in the tissues. And so that should be non, like a specific work in the one part and induced endogenous and shown the efficiency. Who can do that job, the excellent job? So I think metrocyanin is a perfect one. And like I mentioned, they have a one third amino acid is a system powerful scavenge free radical, any free radical, not just one. And that is, a, is a endogenous. And all the organs have the uh, metrocyanin and the pancreas 
liver and heart, they, are, they can induce and upregulate. And uh, so that work on the other step and shown the very powerful and more interesting is a metrosanin binding zinc. The zinc is a, like I mentioned that also involves some insulin function and kind of uh, mimic and uh, like uh, insulin mimic uh, uh, roles. So, so since then, and I start to focus on the metrosanin protect the diabetes the heart to like uh, prevent the uh, diabetic cardiomyopathy development. So the first question is MT can protect that or not? So now I want to uh, follow the following sequence and give you some evidence first, and then uh, explain how uh, MT protects heart, and then to see the potential clinical applications. So in 2002, that moment I just started a lab, and uh, and because I, like I mentioned, that have a concept that is the diabetes direct cause the diabetic heart become the, like a dysfunction, but they don't have the evidence how diabetes directly causes the heart damage. So I first ask is that hyperglycemia in the diabetic patients really induce some cell death from the myocytes? So that will be some cause for the cardiac dysfunction. So we use STZ induced the type 1 diabetes, and then we found, look for the early stage to see the cell death and combine the cell culture, cell culture models and to work on, we found that in vivo hyperglycemia in the diabetic mice really cause RS and uh, oxidative damage, cause mitochondrial damage, release cytochrome C. Cytochrome C release can activate the CASPER-3 and the cleavage that cause apoptosis. And in the cellular level and the cartridge model, we also found the same phenomena. And uh, so that is the way established that in vivo and in vitro, uh, hyperglycemia really direct causes the cardiac cell death and cause oxidative damage. So when we set up the model, so we start to ask the second question, is MT really can protect heart or not? So we use the cardiac cells overexpressed metrosanin, only myocytes. So I show you here, only the heart shown the MT, not other organs. And compare the white type, we use the STZ and make them become type 1 diabetes and early stage, middle stage, and in the later stage, we look for the molecular level and the enzyme release and the cell death structure and function, and even animal survival rate. And what we found, MT really protects the, the, the top part, prevent the oxidative damage and prevent the cell death, prevent uh, diabetic cardiomyopathy development. So through several like, uh, projects, we generate the strong data and uh, MT really good protect heart from diabetes, from the cell death, cardiac enzyme related to the blood, and morphology and the function and the survival rate. So, and we think that is very convince me. But I didn't stop there. I ask, is that metrosanin is a population or human relevance, or not just working in the animal model? So I collaborate with my colleague and in, the, in China. So we found. A, the MT is a, a have a gene mutation in the population. And uh, for the people, if they have a, a MT, metrosanin gene mutation, they have a high risk for diabetes, high risk of become the, like, cardiovascular complications. And we published in that in 2008, and uh, the month is May. But the interesting, and the Italy group, and they use Italy people's uh, population. They also work on the same question, is that metrosanin gene mutation have a high risk and for diabetes or cardiovascular disease, actually, yes. And they published in the same year, same month, not different, like a different journal, but from the different corner in the world. We ask the same question and work in the same project. So that really convinced me and make me very happy. MT really is good. Not only work on different kinds of animal models and also work in the humans and protect the heart from diabetes. So now I can have the interesting to ask, okay, how MT protect that? Because that's very important, very useful. And so we look for the mechanism, like I mentioned in the beginning, I said uh, diabetes basically is the damage that might hungry, release a lot of superoxide, and the superoxide probably interact with the NO from the peroxynitrate cause the downstream damage. So we want to see is the diabetic heart really have that superoxide uh, formation increase or not. 
So this is the what type of math, and uh, you can see control. We use two methods. One is a Florence probe to detect the superoxide, and you can see the diabetes heart, and it really have the, the like a Florence increase. So that means the superoxide level is high, and because we use STZ induced type one diabetes, we want to make sure that RS is not from STZ. So we use the uh, some group uh, diabetes mice when we give STZ make the mice become diabetes. Immediately give the insulin treatment twice a day to make sure shut down and low down the uh, uh, glucose level, close the control. So in that case, and uh, so we didn't see the RS and uh, superoxide. So that means STZ doesn't induce this superoxide. That induced is uh, induced by hyperglycemia because this one not without any treatment. And so this is the, like, uh, the quantity use uh, uh, chemical method, and you can see superoxide significantly increased. But uh, when we have insulin, while control the glucose level, we don't have the superoxide. And how about the heart? Or express metrocyanin without insulin treatment also shown the no RS formations. So that means uh, diabetes really causes the superoxide formation and the metrocyanin really uh, prevent, reduce the superoxide. And uh, like I mentioned, I want to see this downstream, is that superoxide interact with the NO formed uh, like a peroxynitri and cause the protein nitrogen. So we use a 3 nitrotyrosine as a probe to detect the, in the wet type mice and in the heart, as we can see the significant increase of 3 uh, nitrotyrosine formation. And uh, insulin can treat, can prevent that. And uh, if heart or express MT really protect that, do not have the superoxide and do not have the protein nitrogen. So we really answer the question, diabetes causes the superoxide from the peroxynitri, causes the nitrotyrosin formation, and causes uh, cardiac acidosis. So now we understand the, okay, the early part. But uh, we want to continue asking this question. Is that early third death at, at like two weeks or one week or even one month? And also the three nitrotyrosine is uh, really the cause for the late at six months cardiac remodeling and uh, like a dysfunction? Is that how uh, like a chicken and egg is a relationship or just like byproducts? You have 10 phenomena, early stage like this and the later stage like that. So we want to see the, the link. So in that case, we have to use the model can temporarily induce the CRNT and induce a uh, cell death, but, and then we can stop that uh, pathogenic uh, stimuli challenge and let them survive six months to see if that two weeks and apoptosis or two weeks CRNT uh, formation without affect the cardiovascular uh, uh, blood pressure, so that only have some cell death in the heart to see the six, six months later. And we compare the web type to see if that is the cause, and also compare the transgenic mass to see if we can prevent that. So what we found, we found and uh, adherent two and the diabetes really turn on the NOx pathway and generate the superoxide and the peroxynitri and CRNT and apoptosis. As long as they have a apoptosis signal turn on, even we stop the adherent two treatment and this two, can initiate the later state remodeling and cardiac dysfunction. If MT protect the early state part and protect the diabetic cardiomyopathy. So that is really linked the, like the early stage and the later stage. So now we found and the, how to the, like diabetes cause the RS and the peroxynitri damage and cardiac dysfunction. We also want to know that MT protect that part. But like I mentioned, MT have a Another unique part, the binding zinc. We want to see if that is involved some insulin signaling or not, not just the RIS part. So we found, because in the heart, heart is an insulin dependent organ. So that means need the insulin turn on with like an insulin receptor, and then the downstream the PI3 kinase pathway turn on the GSK and the downstream glucose metabolism. When type 1 diabetes do not have insulin, so this pathway shut down, and they use the lipid as like a, like a source to generate energy. But they generate a lot of lipotoxicity because the inflammation in our eyes, and we found the MT can protect part. But we found metrocyanin also can increase the GX, GSK sulfate rate and the signaling. So the partially improves the glucose metabolism. 
So in this study, we found that is that level. So after that, we continue to see how MT affect the AKT levels. And we know AKT, they have a different ice form, AKT1 and AKT2. And when we look for the wet type, you can see the control and the AKT, total AKT and diabetes, total AKT phosphorylation levels significantly reduced. And this is the uh, MTTD overexpress mice and this control and the diabetes. You can see the total AKT phosphorylation level is preserved, not decreased because MT in the heart, in the mild size. But when we look for the ice form, that decrease is not from the AKT1, but predominantly come from the contribution from the AKT2, and also parallel in downstream uh, GSK survey and uh, hexokinase and uh, like a, the enzyme level. And so what have we found? Diabetes specifically and shut down AKT2 signaling pathway and caused the downstream glucose level and reduced. And uh, metrosanin can prevent that part and to re preserve the AKT2 function and preserve glucose metabolism. And uh, when we combined it, uh, like a cell catch model, we found the detail mechanism. We found the uh, TRB3 is a direct inhibitor the AKT2 and MT and pre preserved inhibitor TRB3 and uh, plays a major role. So now probably you will ask what is the TRB3? TRB3 is uh, like a ER stress uh, induced uh, protein or gene, and that is uh, like a, uh, also happened in the heart. You can see that. And uh, TRB3 uh, overexpress were inhibited AKT uh, signalings. And uh, if you are a silence TRB3, and in the diabetic condition, you can kind of prevent diabetic cardiomyopathy. So that means that TRB3 really is a negative regulator for AKT. And uh, so further study, they found the AKT2 uh, is a specific form uh, binding by TRB3. So TRB3 binding, specific binding uh, AKT2 and inhibit the phosphorylation. And uh, lately, and three years ago, and in 2018, and they found that the TRB3 binding AKT2 not just inhibit the phosphorylation, meanwhile also activate the ubiquitin, uh, ubiquitin system to degrade the AKT2, so reduce the expression level and the protein levels. So that is uh, why uh, TRB3 plays a role, and the metrosanin inhibits the TRB3 and can preserve the AKT2 functions. So why like, I'm that interested in AKT2 is that really only one isom plays a major role? It, it is true, because uh, like 20 years ago, in the sense, they published that if mice have an AKT2 uh, deletion, and you don't have any uh, treatment that become the type 2 diabetic models. And it's shown the insulin resistant, hyperglycemia, and have some compli complications. And even the humans in 2004, they published in the science, human if they have a AKT2 gene mutation, or also shown the type 2 diabetic phenotype, shown the like, phenotype insulin resistant. And even three years ago, they still work on this part. So that's why like we think that AKT2 is very important. So we found that metrosanin can preserve AKT2 and protect heart. Is that means that all the metrosanin pre prevention the heart uh, from diabetes are only related to AKT2? So fully re rely on AKT2? And uh, the answer is not, but I will explain it to you. So in order to answer that question, we use uh, the like AKT2 whole body deletions. And uh, because that is continuing to become type 2 diabetes. And then we cross breeding with the uh, AK, uh, MT gene and uh, like expressed mice, and we generate a full mouse line. And this one is an AKT2 knockdown, whole body knockdown. And, but meanwhile, only the heart have MT, and for the global AKT2 deletion mice, and have MT in the heart. And this is a pure like uh, AKT2 deletion mice, both will become type 2 diabetes. And uh, at 24 weeks, that means six months, this supposed to have a phenotype cardiac dysfunction. So we want to see only in the heart how MT is that can reserve or rescue the AKD2 deletion phenotype or not. So what this is like a, just shown the, the phenotype is correct and the model is no problem. You can see this is a control wet type and the MT or express in the heart like uh, MTTG mice, and this is AKT2 knockout mice. And this is a uh, AKT2 knockout mice with a 
hard for all express and MT. You can see the MT in this group and this group significantly higher, no matter male and female. And AKT2 only for two and one type. And AKT2 knockdown mice, even you have MT or express, doesn't affect AKT2 levels because the gene, gene is deletion. So the model no problem, but we, when we see the cardiac function and AKT2 shown the like work large and uh, the distance for the uh, cardi uh, echocardiography and shown the dysfunction. And when we measure the multiple measurement with echo and uh, several measurement shown the abnormality. But uh, if we have MT or express in the heart, even you have a whole body AKT2 deletion and uh, still shown the improved or like revised the cardiac dysfunctions. And uh, when we look for the uh, mild size, cell size, to see if they have a, a cell hypertrophy or not. We use the specific uh, marker to stain your membrane. So that means that membrane, the circle indicated the, the uh, size of the mile size. And uh, you can see this group much larger than other group. And when we quantity that, that means is really in the AKT2 knockdown mice have the cell hypertrophy. And uh, when we look for the fibrosis, you can see that this group shown the significant uh, collagen accumulation that if you have empty in the heart, can do the predominantly and significantly reduce that levels. When we look for the mechanism, and uh, we can see, okay, uh, the, the black like uh, indicated the normal mice, white type, and when usually insulin turn on the insulin signaling and uh, turn on the AKT2, and the AKT2 plays a major role to turn on the downstream cellular pathway to involve the glucose metabolism. But if we have used the AKT2 knockdown mice, and they don't have this pathway, but they competitive and increase AKT for circulation can uh, like rescue a little bit this downstream and uh, metabolism pathway. But you can see that AKT1 a little bit increased in the AKT2 marked out mass. But they cannot rescue all the downstream and uh, genes involved the glucose metabolism. You see GSK3 beta AKT2 group still low. And uh, also like uh, uh, AS160 also were low, no matter male and female, and uh, hexakinase and also low. So that means that this uh, adaptive response a little bit makes the mice survive, but cannot tolerate become the like, uh, these cardiac dysfunctions. But when we give the MT or express in the AKT2, they do not have this pathway like here, but they have MT shown somehow to can turn on these downstream genes. You can see the blue and also reserve that, like a revise like a, can revise that go to the almost normal levels. And you can see that all the like, measurement related to the downstream glucose metabolism that can be preserved. So somehow MT can replace AKT2 and go to downstream to turn on the multiple pathways. How? We don't know yet. So that is my next project. So and uh, so, the, we, so far we know and through several projects we know the antioxidant pathway and MT can protect, uh, prevent that pathway. And we also know that AKT2 plays a major role in the cardiac glucose metabolism. And we know diabetes specific shut down AKT2 pathway through the ER stress and the TRB3. And we found that MT can reserve that part to protect the um, antioxidant pathway and also the glucose metabolism pathways. So that is uh, regarding some mechanism we still interested in work on how and deeper and deeper. But uh, meanwhile, we, we didn't forget and we, we also need to think about the pro, uh, clinical translational uh, potentials. So as I mentioned, metrosanin usually is bending zinc, so, and also is inducible. And can we use the zinc as like an inducer to induce our heart, MT increase, protect the heart from diabetes caused uh, complications? And so that based on that, and we try to use zinc and to treat the diabetic mice to see MT increase. So and, uh, in 2006, and uh, James Wang, and right now he worked in the uh, Harvard as a faculty, and uh, he used the in vivo model and the in vivo model and uh, dissect zinc really can turn on the MT in the heart, showing the significant protection. If we shut down and knock down MT, that only left a little bit protection. So that means predominant goes through the MT. 
And uh, that is another indirect uh, like, uh, evidence. We use uh, different metals induced uh, metallocyanin. They also show the protection. So that means that metallocyanin plays some important roles. So after we published that in 2006, and in the next year in 2007, and uh, uh, one uh, group from clinical and the raw and uh, type 2 diabetic patients, what they did? They divide their, uh, measure their uh, serum uh, blood uh, zinc levels. They divide one, uh, two group. One group is lower than 14, and one group is higher than 14. So that based on zinc level to divide two group. But they found that, uh, the type 2 diabetes patients with uh, low zinc showed a significantly increased uh, chronic cardiac uh, bias and uh, damage. So that means the uh, diabetic complication in the heart cardiac complication really increase if they have a low zinc. And so that is very consistent with what we found in the animal model. And so that is very interesting. So they make the condition, like a conclusion, in type two diabetic patient, zinc is an independent risk for the complications. So we continue to work on the zinc. Okay, we use a, like a type one model. How about type two? I like convince the, like a match to the human study. We use DBD mice and we found zinc. Remind to prevent the type two diabetic uh, cardiomyopathy development and induce metallocyanin. So we have the conclusion: zinc can like do, prevent the diabetic cardiomyopathy development in both type one, type two diabetic models. So now. Sure. Oh, DBDB. Yeah. Like, what is the difference? Okay, so DBDB is like a one spontaneous become type two diabetes because they have a leptin receptor deletions. So that means that the, the, the keep eat, keep eat, and work fast and become the insulin resistant type two diabetes. Sorry about that. So tryptosin is a direct. Uh, Damage the beta cells. So it's more like type one. The, the is in type one, yeah. yeah. And it's all insulin. And the DBDB is the insulin level high and also have glycemia because they eat too much and got the obesity induced type two, yeah. So after we now think I can protect the type one, type two diabetes, and like a, uh, for the mechanism study, I just explained MT or express can rescue the AKD2 deletion phenotype. So we want to ask, can we use the not transgenic model to humans? And we use the zinc to induce and MT to rescue the uh, HD2 deletion model and the phenotype, that would be great. So, and we know uh, the HD2 mice, uh, two months development uh, like, a, uh, like a, um, insulin resistant and uh, have some type two phenotype. And uh, we start zinc treatment for three, three months. And then meanwhile, we have some group, we have a uh, treat one week, and one month and three months to see that treatment can increase the MT in the heart or not. So you can see that one week and one month and three months, and the white type we see the MT increased, and one month and cardiac MT increased, metrocyanin, and this is like a white type, and this is AKT2 knockout mice, and the MT also increased the metrocyanin in the heart. So that means that zinc can induce MT in the white type and uh, AKD2 deletion mouse. So, but when we look for cardiac remodeling, that is uh, like a collagen accumulation, so they only show in the AKD2 models. And if we have a three months of zinc treatment and pre prevent that or reduce the level of accumulations. And uh, also is a TGF beta level and CTGF that is a signaling and uh, like a pathway to uh, uh, causes uh, like a, uh, fibrosis. So that is uh, protected by zinc treatment. When we look for the like, cardiac function and the AKD2 and uh, most like uh, last uh, study shown significant cardiac dysfunction. But if we use zinc treatment, can rescue that like uh, we use uh, MT or express models. So that is a uh, us uh, like uh, probably a uh, unique uh, models. For the population, they have AKD2 deletions and they show the typical type two diabetes. Probably we use zinc can rescue, can like a, can replace the AKT2 function, can help them to control the insulin resistant, control the glucose level, and prevent the complications. So that is uh, something we are looking for is a possible collaborative with uh, and uh, your clinician to think about that. 
So, and the last year, and the nature uh, review uh, cardiology, uh, cardiology invited me to uh, summarize what we found in the like, uh, past 10 years or 20 years. And uh, I collaborated with a uh, uh, couple of integrators and we wrote the review based on the mechanism drives uh, preclinical study and the clinical evidence. And what we found that, like I emphasized, we found that the RS and the oxidative stress really plays a like, pivotal role and for the complex uh, complication and uh, phenotype. And we, we like, uh, discussed the, how the RS involved and how MT as a center to prevent that uh, oxidative stress and that could be used in zinc. And we summarized several uh, clinical studies using zinc to prevent a complication to control the glucose level in type 2 and type 1 diabetes. And uh, after we published that last year and this year, I found one interesting uh, study. Uh, they, they select the type 2 diabetic patients. And some patients already have a complication. They have the dialysis. And uh, so dialysis, we know that sometimes we lose a lot of minerals. So easily cause some uh, zinc deficiency, copper deficiency, something like that. So they divide two groups. And how, like, uh, for 67 patients after screening, they limited some patients. And for the 46, and they found how 21 already have zinc deficiency. And the other 25, zinc level is normal. So they decided to give the zinc treatment for the type 2 diabetic patient with zinc deficiency and for the 50 milligram per day and for eight weeks. So this is the baseline for the two group without that much change. But when we look for the, the like a, when they end the study and they have a several measurements, it's very interesting. For example, the zinc level, and that is a two group control, and they already have a normal zinc level, and this is the type two diabetic patient with low zinc, and that's significantly lower than this group. But they have eight weeks, two months treatment, you can see the blood zinc level significantly uh, come back and even uh, uh, increased. And that were how the, the results, you can see the fasting glucose, uh, like a control glu uh, blood glucose level. And before zinc treatment, this group have a high glycemia, higher than the, uh, the zinc normal group. And when we have a, like eight week treatment and the glucose level is significantly reduced, go to 130. But this one's still that levels. And uh, when we look for the, the protein, they call the copeptin, and uh, is the one uh, measurement for the kidney functions. And you can see this group shown a little bit higher compared to this group. But uh, with zinc treatment, zinc treatment like, prevent that or like uh, slow down that uh, kidney dysfunction. And also for the CRP uh, and that uh, C reactive protein, and you can see that before is eight higher than the, the type two with normal zinc, but after uh, eight weeks treatment, 50% reduced the systemic uh, inflammation. So that's why this uh, like summarize and uh, this like a uh, zinc supplement really improves their like a uh, uh, zinc homeostasis and uh, improves the glucose uh, control uh, levels and also reduce some of the kidney dysfunction and reduce the systemic inflammation. So, but uh, the author hope and zinc also change the uh, insulin level, but I, I, I disagree, and I think that's normal because, uh, like I mentioned, zinc plays a insulin sensitizing function in the parallel tissues, so don't need the increase the uh, uh, insulin levels. So that is uh, like a, the new study convinced, and the zinc treatment for type two diabetes, especially the group with low zinc. So that is some like uh, the diabetic cardiomyopathy and related to the zinc. And uh, now I want to use a couple of slides. What time here? Yes, okay. And I want to the, the following uh, couple of slides to talk about some my new idea. Try to look for some collaborator to see if you're in, interested in that or not. And I remember last week our, our invited speaker uh, talk about the uh, COVID-19 and with diabetes. And the challenge is the uh, uh, like uh, if you not control the glucose, they significantly increase the mortality, hospitalization, and the situation and the complication increased. But uh, you are trying to good control the glucose is not that easy because several medicine that were in, enhance the inflammation, no inflammation infections and virus uh, replications. And so that is the, the challenge how to like uh, good control the glucose. So I think my project is uh, unique and probably just fit 
this population. And uh, why? And uh, I already mentioned things have multiple function and for in our body. They can control, reduce glucose level, they can enhance your immune function, they can protect your endothelium to uh, against uh, uh, hyperglycemic causes damage, protect heart, protect the kidney, protect the lung and all the organs. And uh, more interesting also like a help your recovery test. That is some COVID-19 showing the symptoms. And uh, zinc, if you go to the intracellular and zinc can directly inhibit the virus and RNA replication. So that is a, like a zinc unique part. They can direct work on the virus replication and also can f protect the multiple function to, to uh, inhibit the complications. So that's why they already have a several were like a written the review, try to cause the clinician like attention, emphasize that is important. The list like the multiple function like I list in there, and they said this should be very promising. And so is that really have some evidence? The part that directly or indirected? Answer is yes. So last year and the but the later part, and they have one group they collect like the COVID-19 patients. And compared to healthy and the, the uh, control, they found that COVID-19 patients generally have a low zinc compared to the controls. And for the COVID-19 patients, and they divide the low zinc group and the high zinc group, you can see the low zinc group, they have a significant LDH level increase compared to that, uh, with the normal or a little better the zinc levels. So that means worse the complications. And uh, for the hospitalization and for deaths, and the zinc lower group is increasingly higher, 60%, 20% compared to 30% or 0%. And uh, for this group, you have used the corticotone to help the patient to become stable. So that corticotone have very bad the, the side effects in later because that causes our nail and the joint problems. So that is a something zinc probably helped. So they have the conclusion COVID-19 patients and generally have a zinc deficiency and if like have a baseline have a zinc deficiency that worse the COVID-19 patient's complication and stay hospital longer and also increase the deaths. And uh, that is uh, one study. And uh, recently, they have uh, another new study, and uh, like just published this year, and from Sudan. And uh, they have more case and compare the last uh, uh, study. So this is uh, like a zinc level in the blood, and this is uh, like an interleukin six. That is kind of a uh, cytokine storm for the COVID-19. You can see the zinc level and with the uh, inflammation that is negative uh, correlation. The higher zinc, the less inflammation and the less the uh, cytokine storm. And this is the CR uh, peptide. And so this is a, like a, the time you need to make the patient become stable. So that is a low zinc take a long time and the high zinc take a short time. So, and uh, they look for the mechanism and they use uh, like a Lawrence label the zinc and to try to see that uh, we have a virus inflammation and infected and they found the zinc can go to the cells and they found the, R, uh, the uh, SARS uh, coronal virus uh, uh, RNA got the replication significantly inhibited by the zinc. So that is uh, from the like a mechanism slab. So it's a point. So that is a significant correlation for the low zinc and with the COVID-19 severity and mortality and the serum zinc content maybe is a novel and additional like a parameter to predict the outcome. So that means that we need, really need to measure the zinc level to see, to watch and these patients. So the urgent and the kind of calls the uh, like a clinician to use this one. So we summarize that, and in theory, these things have a multiple benefits, in fact, and to favor therapy for a COVID-19 patient, especially with diabetes. And the severe COVID-19 patients have a low zinc, and so that is also is one reason. And the zinc deficiency associated with poor clinical outcome and the inflammation cytokines. And uh, last, I want to also talk about uh, this study. This study, they collected the COVID-19 patients, and uh, they found uh, the samples they found that NERV2 is significantly induced, reduced in the, these patients. 
And when they did, like work on the intracellular level, use a, a NERF2 activator, they shown that cells can tolerate for the virus infection, can tolerate have the inflammation response, can show some protect from the virus caused the, uh, the damage and the uh, you know, hurt. So that is also NERF2 activator probably is a sun and uh, antioxidant activator to, to think about for the patients. Why I talk about the NERV2? Because uh, after I introduce this study, probably you can figure out that. So we found metrocyanin very important, but metrocyanin is one of the NERV2 downstream genes. So we found we use a sulforaphane can uh, tear on the NERV2, and the NERV2 go to nuclear, uh, tear on the multiple antioxidant. Uh, one of them is metrocyanin. We know diabetes have the turn on the inflammation, so sulforaphane can through the nerve two, can turn on MT and the other antioxidant protect the heart. But when we knock down MT, we found that sulforaphane still some, shown some protection. Why? Because you only shut down one, the nerve two still have other antioxidant increased, still shown some partial protections. But when we shut down the nerve two, they totally lose the protection. So that means sulforaphane so comes through empty and also empty independent pathways. So that has come from the final and uh, like illustration. So my group work on diabetic cardiomyopathy. We use MT and zinc induced MT, and we found that nerve two is upstream for MT, and we can use the, a lot of stuff tear on the nerve two and tear on the MT bending zinc to protect. So that is where we good, not like only for diabetic cardiomyopathy, but also good for the COVID-19 infected patients. So this part is my, my guess for the in the future. So we should measure the mineral level for the like <coughs> COVID-19 patients, no matter if they have a diabetes or not. And from the zinc level, we know if we need a supplement for these patients. And uh, we also need want to know is they have some heavy metal toxic can enhance, make the body, that patient more sensitive for the, the COVID-19. And if we can dynamically look for the, uh, the metal and the trace element level, probably we can have a more mechanism to who is the egg, who is the chicken, that is a phenotype or just have a link. So that is, a, I need to collaborate with you guys to, to see is that potential or not. So now I want to thank the, the like a foundation support me and my, group, my team, and we have several groups and like a, several people already left, but uh, Jason, Lin Chen, and Jim Yang, and they're still here, and Hongbo, and so we have a very strong collaborative team, and Yitan, Jin Kai, and uh, Brad Keller, and uh, the following uh, people, and Carper Vendigers, we have a, and the several walls, and we have a serious collaboration, try to bring some clinical question, go to live, we make some mechanism, explain to them and how to like, collaborate. So just final slides for, for the, the today's the, like a map code. So they suggest me on share for this or? Yeah, I can help you with it. very nice, thank you. Oh, thank you. I can take any question if you have. So I have a, uh, the question. Sure. Especially the last part, so okay. it's still the very, very nice review, very engaging. So um, I remember Fauci on the news telling, I think, zinc, D, and C, you know, throughout the thing. So there's some studies which was alluded to last year, last week at the top, about vitamin D with the COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, come, uh, you know, like the levels sufficient, the levels are sufficient, they did better outcome like. I don't remember if it was just diabetics or across the board, because your zinc data is not not. Yeah, zinc level is uh, not just uh, COVID nineteen, yeah. not uh, like uh, that is so, whole. Thing. So I was just wondering, is it more like a nutritional issue? Like if they're low in zinc, low yes, in, yeah, uh, because of inflammation and you know immunity, is that is that it, or is it just zinc specific? Perhaps if I measure Z level. They being low, they have low albumin, you know, exactly. Uh, yes, you know, and uh, like uh, I can do answer like uh, in two, like uh, from the nutrition like a uh, point. And right now, uh, basically, they are not suggest only one item. So they give you vitamin E or uh, like uh, some vitamins, and give you vitamin D, and sometimes give you zinc and uh, selenium, and also some other part because they don't know which is which. But uh, for me, and I specifically work on this yeah. thing, I know you have to measure that. 
and not necessarily 100% people come, we give zinc. And probably some ones don't need, and they have a normal levels. And we specifically pay attention for the, that individual have a low zinc. That definitely need zinc. Like uh, not COVID-19 diabetes also have shown that like a complication and uh, zinc deficiency, but uh, look like a, a lot of people think, oh, we don't have that because we have a good enough nutrition. But uh, now a lot of people on diet, they only fruits, vegetables, they don't have red meat, they don't have oyster, they don't have that much zinc intake. So probably they already got zinc deficiency, but they don't know. Like I mentioned, our body, we don't have a good storage for zinc. And if you have the recently two months on diet, really probably have the zinc deficiency. Yeah. That can cause some inflammation, make you some insulin resistant. Actually, you'll reduce some weight, but cause a lot of other problems. Yeah, so that is the zinc specific, why I yeah. emphasize okay. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My second question was related to diabetic non ischemic cardiomyopathy. Is the like is it more systolic, diastolic, biventricular? And is it different in the type one mice and the type two or the type one type two mice? Like uh, for the Yeah, yeah. For like a uh, yeah. okay, you have this. Yeah. For for think and uh, that is a protect the heart. I'm sorry. You're fine. You can you yeah, can keep protect talking. Protect the heart is not just uh, from that video. Because uh, like a uh, uh, one slide probably shown that there is non uh, like a diabetic heart because that uh, thing can prevent the cerebrus and set from COD, somatochondry, integrity. Okay, so that is uh, some part related to the, I think, protect the non diabetic heart. But the diabetes is more related to the insulin signaling pathway. We have two pathways one is the antioxidant pathway, and one is the insulin uh, like a pathway involved. So that is uh, like a so like a not a very specific for diabetes. Yeah. The chat box has questions right next to copper. Okay. And, and then I don't know like there may be other uh, folks there. Okay. So like a uh, what kind of stuff can increase the uh, first question? What's uh, like uh, other uh, uh, my type? Uh, what is uh, any other like uh, other way to increase the metrocyanin? They have a lot. Like I mentioned that uh, metrocyanin is inducible. And even you have a cut in here, and your liver uh, uh, metrocyanin increase, your heart metrocyanin increase. And uh, you, if you have some like a uh, chemical, you, like uh, exposed ketamine and even other like uh, even uh, adromycin, some anti-cancer drug that also induces the metrocyanin. Metrocyanin kind of was uh, like a heat shock protein. It's uh, just a stress protein. In our body, normally they are not that much important. Knockdown KOMS, so I'm okay, and or express, so I'm okay. But why you have a challenge, depend on the, like what. If knockout mass, you have heavy metal that are more sensitive to that because they're bending heavy metal to remove that. But for all express and basically it's normal, they are not like given scavenged all the free radical. Our body needs some small amount of free radicals. So that is a, they have a several methods to increase the metrocyanin. So this is the one question from the chat. Yeah. And the second, oh, thank you. And uh, oh, what is the, like uh, the natural source for zinc? Like I just explained that red meat, yeah. nuts, oyster, and uh, so when you have a diet, pay attention, you eat some nuts and with your vegetable. So that can help your the zinc and intake. You don't like oyster, you don't like red meat, but mm -hmm. keep nuts. And the dark chocolate also have high zinc, yeah. but the people kind of fear of chocolate, too much energy. Mm -hmm. But the nuts is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Dr. Kai. Um, Hi. Can you over-treat it? I mean, is there any danger of too much zinc? Yeah, like uh, zinc is, uh, is toxic. No, like at uh, third slide, I mentioned about that, but uh, not that much. Actually, is uh, yes, yes is uh, everything. You cannot too much. Anything is good. Or you cannot too much. So zinc is the same thing. Even zinc have very wide those window and keep safe. Uh, not like a copper and not like a iron, and that is uh, too much. They have a frontal reaction, cause a free radical. But zinc not directly involves a frontal reaction. So zinc just uh, compete with the other uh, matrix elements, like copper and iron, and cause some problem. But that is uh, you have to be 
four or five fold uh, higher than the high, top tolerant dose. So not that easy to cause the toxin effect. And your models are all non-ischemic, correct? Non-ischemic. Uh, we just use chronic uh, diabetic models. So will it also work with ischemic cardiomyopathy? Yes. Yeah, they, they work on that they, because the, the zinc can preserve the AKT signaling and the ischemia model, they have the, like they call the as a uh, kind of some single layer a, a AKT pathway can protect that uh, cell uh, dies. That uh, more involved the uh, AKT1 as a form, not the AKT2. So AKT1 and uh, got uh, up regulate and zinc protect from mitochondrial damage and from RS and uh, induce MT, induce uh, like uh, other antioxidant strong them like. Uh, the protection from the ischemia model. So that is, is some uh, oxidative stress pathway, not a zinc insulin and uh, pathway. More question? <laughs> and I need some collaborator collaborate for for zinc. And uh, is it possible for for us to find the AKD two deletion patients? Gene sequencing to see. Uh, oh, they have a. Oh, they have a yeah. Can I have a question here? Uh, in the cl in the clinical study, the people with the zinc deficiency were much much thinner than the people who were uh, had normal circulating concentrations. So, how does the zinc deficiency come about? Is it because of poor nutrition or diarrhea or malabsorption, or are the, you know what what exactly is the physiology of zinc metabolism? That group, because of like a, that, for my understanding, because they are dialysis, and uh, they, they like a, the dialysis causes the zinc, zinc deficiency, and that probably the dialysis causes a, a patient loses the weight, and so that is a, because not like my study, that's my understanding. When I saw that. I will quickly think about that, but uh, I didn't dig out the very much. So usually, zinc and cannot can reduce your body weight, and if you like a chronic a small amount, like in the like a, the animal most model is different because that as most type one diabetes most of the time does it shrink and they have a low weight, low body weight, but we have one group use the high fat diet induced uh, like obese. And we gave zinc protect heart. That also didn't show the significantly reduce the body weight, but they showed the significantly improve the insulin sensitizing, like sensitivity, and shown the glucose control, shown the cardiac function, and the prevention for the kidney function, but not the body weight reduced. So zinc is, is not a is good one to help you to reduce the body weight, <laughs> lose the weight. Like a half year of the insulin sensitivity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. Thanks, Take Copper. <laughs> Take care. Oh, yeah. You can turn this. These are not for you. <laughs> the fellows were saying. Oh, really? For, for the thing. So let me just uh, okay. close this. Thank you for your guys coming.